All right, folks, this is Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Welcome to another Bike Chat. Today, look, here's the deal. If you like coffee and you like mountain bikes, you're going to like this Bike Chat. So hang in there and stay tuned. All right, folks. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Today, we are talking to Sean Benish from Loam Coffee. Um, pretty lucky we were able to get him on the show today. So, hey, welcome, Sean. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, cool. Um, so look, folks, like I said before, if you like coffee, like who doesn't like coffee, um, and you like mountain biking, which is why you're following regular guy mountain biking, uh, you're gonna like this. You're gonna like this epico- episode. Um, Sean is the founder of a company called Loam Coffee. I've been doing a little research on Loam because you always want to come <laughs> into these knowing something, or, or or the guy I'm talking to is gonna be sitting there thinking, why did I even get on this call? <laughs> and um, so, so Loam, they sell coffee and coffee products, but one of the things I read, I read an article, um, one of the things that you actually wrote, Sean, was that you see Loam, and I'd love for you to explain you know, more about okay. this to the users, but you see Loam as almost an accessory to the bike industry. It was a wonderful <laughs> yeah. phrase you said, like, it's like, yeah. like, we're really a bike product company, like, like Race yeah. Face or anything else. We yeah. just happened to offer riders coffee, and I thought, yes. dude, that is so freaking cool. And I and I want you to take this further because I thought that was what <laughs> I really like. like I said I, I totally remembered it. I read it off your article because I'm like, that's so true. Anytime you watch one of those cool jumping racing pro videos, mm-hmm. like the beginning montage is what a bunch of cool pros sitting mm-hmm. by a fire drinking coffee. So it's like <laughs> awesome. So let me let me shut up and let you take it here and tell us about yeah. Loam and what you meant by that. Yeah. Well, I mean. That wasn't even, that wasn't even intentional. I mean, it was, it's not like a marketing thing or anything. It just kind of, and I didn't think of it until like over a year into this. And it just kind of dawned on me, like, I don't even, I mean, we roast coffee, we sell coffee, we're passionate about coffee. Mm -hmm. You know, we take it very serious, uh, what we do, but it just kind of clicked that, like, I really, how I view myself and the interaction with writers and even other companies, like in my mind, it's like, I, we're just like, we're we're like race face. We're like rock shots, obviously not to that scale, but just like, we're just like components company. And I think about that because I, you know, I have a lot of friends who are roasters, you know, all over the country and like, I love hanging out with them, but my mind, it just keeps, keeps going back. Like, but I'm a mountain biker and I'm into mountain biking and that kind of, that's really what we're about. So. And you've got a bit of a mountain biking history. Again, I don't want to keep on saying, and I read this about you, but, but like I said, I, I like to come into these interviews somewhat yeah, prepared. That's um, good. And, and you do have some, some, a bit of history. You did some, some coaching, I think. You did, you, what, what, oh, I, I forgot exactly. I have it over here. But you, you've been yeah. in this industry for a while. You didn't just say, hey, I like my mountain bikes and I want a cup of joe. <laughs> yeah, so for, over, for about a five-year period, I worked as a mountain biking guide. That's uh, in Southern Arizona. Right. So, you know, some of that time was full time, some of it was part time. But yeah, so over a five year period, I did that. And so I had the opportunity to take thousands of people out on the trail, oftentimes introducing people to not only mountain biking, right. but mountain biking in the desert, which has its own uh, fun adventures as well. But yeah, so yeah. That's definitely. awesome. Well, my wife had taken me once um, on, on a Utah getaway trip and, uh-huh. um, one of the components of the trip was we got to take a mountain bike ride with a guide. And I was mm. like looking at that guy saying, dude, talk about an awesome life. I mean, I'm sure there's, <laughs> and look, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's downsides to it. And you're probably, yeah. you know, guiding some people that are just like Moe's, you know, and you're like, man, I just yeah. want to get going, guy. But it still was beautiful to be out there and yeah. ride like that. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. um, so you've been doing mountain biking for a better part of your life. Obviously, you know, you love it. Mm-hmm. Um, probably drinking coffee for a better part of your life, but you went full Monty with the coffee over here, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. what? Uh, the reason why I'm asking is because I had a little brew kit. I'll tell you, uh-huh. I had one. That yeah. son of a gun was so freaking loud when you started. It was spinning and it was like brewing and making coffee beans. And there, there's, there's, an, there's certainly an art to this. Um, yeah. Mountain biking, you know, I ride. I'm not very good at it, but I ride. But you guys have a, I mean, your, your website's beautiful. The artwork, mm-hmm. do you take these pictures? I mean, the artwork is gorgeous on on the site in your picture so like what got you into this and who are you doing this with and everything 
Uh, yeah, I think everything is always like you kind of start off, you know, kind of go in this direction. And then, you know, I think that's just kind of part of life that just mm -hmm. all these unforeseen twists and turns. So so actually, um, you know, the story goes way back in that. I mean, really, from when I was a mountain biking guide and, you know, did that, had a great time mm -hmm. um, in my free time, I'd always take out. Um, just other friends into the wilderness to go mountain biking and hiking as well and just thoroughly um, enjoyed that and so kind of all along I always thought like man I'd love to do something like this on my own like kind of someday have my own guiding service and and just do it because right. I really had fun and for me it was all about the relationships you know because there was one trail I literally counted I had been on it over 600 times. Oh, wow. So okay. after a while, it's not as much about the, the trail. It was really about the experience. Sure, and the just people being you meet people. and everything, right. Yeah. Yeah, so we moved to the Northwest. And um, so I thought, okay, we're going to do this. And it's like, okay, how do we start? Like, mm -hmm. oh, let's do a crowdfunding campaign to okay. kind of kick things off. And, um, and it was very lackluster. I mean, we made enough to kind of get going as far as legal entity and kind of start with that and kind of – Establish some partnerships with some different companies and so on, but really was I was far short of what I needed to really launch. To, to um, launch to launch Loam or to launch the, no the guiding company. Right. Okay, that's I want to make sure I was on par with you. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. So so the whole Loam thing really came about as like initially it was like I'm just going to do this to raise funds. Okay. To do the guiding thing not having any idea that it would just like take off. Mm -hmm. like this. So, so it went from, we're doing this to raise funds. Um, and that's kind of how it caught, you know, the whole mountain bike theme because like, Oh, we're raising funds to, you know, start a mountain bike guiding company. And again, mountain biking is on my brain. Right. I think I'm, you know, that's kind of my worldview per se. Um, so that's kind of really how it started. Mm -hmm. And then it just started taking off and, you know, just kind of our social media footprint started growing and people yes. started hearing about us and we had a couple like you know magazine articles on us and all of a sudden it just started taking off mm -hmm. to the point where like i almost began forgetting about like the whole mountain bike guiding thing just gotcha. because like this was just opening up a whole nother world of like in the mountain bike world and industry that i didn't even know kind of was there and available for us it's right. not that that won't happen with the guiding thing, but this has really been such a fun journey and getting right. us so many friendships and connections literally all over the world. Well, you know what? Here's the thing too, dude. The guiding would be amazing, but mm -hmm. you're definitely focusing on a a, a, a a group of people that you're going to um, going to help or be part of their life, change their life, uh, because you have to go and be in your guide right but but with coffee and this approach um you also have the ability to give back which i love mm -hmm. because again checked out your site you've got riders you guys sponsor um mm -hmm. you guys uh you build trails and i love the fact that you name your trails after your coffee or, uh, or whatever well, we way it goes or the I, I, I don't know how, however it works there's some kind of something yeah. relationship with the trail name and your i don't yeah, know how yeah, it goes yeah. We don't build trails, so <laughs> just be but clear on that. <laughs> there was something that you 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 related all together, where I think is awesome. Where like I guess what I'm trying to say is you didn't <laughs> sell out, dude. Like you you your 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 core is mountain biking, which is beautiful, yeah. and I love that. And you I can tell. I mean, I'm looking at the books on your bookshelf, and it's like bike. I mean, like you're you're a biker, man, and I love it. Um, but you found another passion, and mm -hmm. you put them together, yeah. and then you're given back to the people that you want to be part of, which is just so, so cool. And that, I just, I just think that from an outsider looking in, that's awesome. That's such a cool, cool way of approaching everything. And it's just a lot of fun. It, it is fun. It is fun. And that's one of the things that we stress when we talk to different writers about being like a grassroots writer, you know, uh, super grassroots, whatever. Right. And, you know, usually the conversation is like, you know, what kind of relationship? Is there a contract to sign? And I just said, listen, initially, we just want to keep this as 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 relational as possible. Let's mm -hmm. just have fun with it right. because, you know, there's, you know, as we grow larger, I understand we need to continue to add infrastructure right. um, to support the growth. But as long as I can, I'm just going to hold out on let's be 
streamlined, minimal, and highly relational. And so right. far, it's been working, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and you have um, – now, explain to me this. What are these crews, <laughs> all right? Because I'm trying to understand – because it, it seems like it's fun. So you've got a, a flannel crew. You've got uh, a bunch of these different crews. What what, what are what, – valley <laughs> mountain bike crew. Who are these crews? What, what is so this? So these are, these are just groups of riders um, – you know, and, there, and we still have a number that we don't even have on the website yet. Okay. So they could be racing teams. It could be like the flannel crew, just a bunch of guys who, mm-hmm. you know, just like to get out and shred. And mm-hmm. they kind of have their own, you know, kind of squad. And they have, a, you know, Facebook and social mm-hmm. media and Instagram nice. presence. Um, and so, you know, at some point they reach out, you know, if we would basically sponsor them gotcha. uh, with discounts and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. so, and for us, that's like, yeah, that's what we want to do. We want to be a part of that. Awesome. And I, it, I, and again, I say everything, you know, it is reciprocal because, you know, we're, we're really helping each other out because, you know, they get discounted coffee, mm-hmm. very discounted coffee. And and they're stoked on it, and then you know they're posting stuff, and right. we're reposting. So it kind of has this kind of mutually beneficial relationship, and that's kind of how we work with our writers mm-hmm. and our teams. And I don't think as many companies understand the value of that as as you guys do, because uh, I recently became a, a, an ambassador for um, for um, um, Honey Stinger. Okay. Okay. I love those waffles. Holy cow! I love those waffles. <laughs> They're amazing, <laughs> but I want to talk about you guys. But but the fact is, that waffles is good. Waffles is good, people, man. So, um, but the fact that waffles go well with coffee. In fact, I uh, put yeah. the waffle on top of the coffee, warm it up anyway. Um, but they're not buying me a house. Mm. Okay, I'm not getting. They're giving me a sizable discount. Uh huh. And look, mountain biking is not a massive lucrative sport. Okay, mm. it's these little things that just make you feel special. Mm. So I'm running around. I'm, 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 yeah, honey stinger. Honey, yeah, baby. Everyone's getting honey stinger for Christmas. You know, but yeah. you know what? It makes you feel good. Mm. And especially because there's only so many pros out there, but there are tons and tons and tons of regular Joes, regular guys mm. that just yeah. want to be part of the sport, just yeah. love it, love it yeah. more than anything. And <clears throat> this yeah. passion is shared with the organizations that just, just, just do something. Like you said, you didn't give them crates of coffee for nothing. Yeah. You gave them a good discount. Yeah. They're happy to represent you. Mm-hmm. And you now feel like you're helping them and they feel like they're part of the team, like I feel with that company. And mm-hmm. it's just cool, man. It's just, it's just mm-hmm. a nice feeling, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> yeah. And then even for all of our ambassadors and grassroots writers, then we mm-hmm. have like a, like a monthly, even newsletter, just kind of in house your lone family mm-hmm. and just keeping everyone in the loop on what's going on, you know, announcement, right. you know, changes and new stuff. So it's been fun Good. to have kind of that special growing relationship with all these writers. I mean, I, I certainly hope that you get big enough to the point where you have to consider how you're going to create that infrastructure. <laughs> but right now yeah. it's wonderful that you can kind of keep it, you know, as casual yeah. as you can. Yeah. So let's talk about mountain biking. What, what kind of bikes okay. do you ride? Where do you like okay. to ride? Do you have a style or what, what about bikes? Uh, <laughs> well, I feel like, especially in the Northwest, I'm now an anomaly. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so all the years, all the years living in Arizona, I was your, I was your, your Lycra clad. Oh no. Single speed cross country rider. Uh oh. And then I moved to the Northwest, and I remember, um, yeah. It was like a wake up call. I remember heading mm-hmm. into the Columbia Gorge with my lightweight single speed bike, and it was just like, "That's gonna happen." Oh my! Yeah. My my <laughs> buddy, a, a, go my, ahead. My buddy Frank wore 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 Lycra once to a ride. Now we call him Rody. <laughs> We're like, oh, okay, Frank's got yeah. the spandex <laughs> so I, on. <laughs> so I had to learn uh, <laughs> quick that you know, because me, like, oh, let's do like a thirty mile ride, and I remember. Um, you know, connected with some friends and I had my first shuttle experience. Okay. And I remember we went to Post Canyon and Hood River and um, I still had my little single speed, you know, lightweight cross country bike. Um, still have it. Sure. And um, we did like about three or four shuttled runs. And I just, to me, it was just like, 
this is this is stupid. Right, right, right. <laughs> and that, you know, like we drove, we spent like so much time driving and we do like a 15 minute run and then we drive back. And I remember at the end of the day, these guys are like, oh, that's, oh, I'm so tired. And I remember thinking like, wait, we just coasted down. <laughs> I mean, that was an exaggeration, but I was no, like. No, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. We, we drove <laughs> so a car up the hill and we rode down the hill. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I, I've grown and learned lots and I've picked up a number of bikes um, since then from, you know, a couple of different Diamondback bikes. Nice. And, um, you know, my last was a, a giant trance that I absolutely love. And then actually I, <laughs> so earlier I actually sold that just for, for this company, just okay. to make sure that, you know, I'm kind of funneling my own personal resources into this. Mm -hmm. And so, so now, you know, I have the bike that I ride, I have a 16 year old KHS soft tail. Okay. That, um, totally old school. Um, you know, I converted, I upgraded it, repainted it. So I have mm -hmm. like a fun one by 10 on it. Um, so that's my ride for the moment. Gotcha. 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 Well, you know what? I had, um, a Canon Del Jekyll that was within the okay. same, um, time frame as you, you know, uh -huh. the age, you know, uh, yeah. but the only reason why I got rid of, obviously 26 inch, Right. I mean, because that's yep, what. Yep, yep. Yep. But um, the only reason why I got rid of that one is because um, the lefty fork was no longer huh? serviceable. <laughs> yeah. And I'd have to go and buy a whole new. But I couldn't just buy a fork. I'd have to yeah. buy their lefty one, which they, they, it's a good fork. But yeah. I'd have to buy theirs, which just it was like, come on, it wasn't going to make sense. And I couldn't buy a regular fork because then I have to also change the front wheel because it had the, 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 the hub for that. Yep. And the rear shock was a proprietary shock. So if I could have ah. upgraded those two, I'd probably still be riding that Jekyll right now. Because you know what you get you get used to the bike. The yeah. bike knows you, you know the bike and yeah. you got this relationship. Yeah. I know it sounds silly. It's a piece of metal, no, no, but it's no, not. It you know it, it, the it, thing. It's and it's for me it's a, there's a lot of memories too. I mean yeah, that's yeah. yeah, 16 year old bike and I literally replaced everything yeah. on it. You yeah, know? I just think I stripped it know. down and powder coated it and you know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I wish I could show you photos, but, you know, try to find a dropper seat post for a 26.8. I, I couldn't, <laughs> I could, same thing here, I couldn't get a dropper, it was another thing, I couldn't get a dropper because yeah. of the, um, the the seat tube size. Yeah. Um, same thing for the handlebars, it was hard to even get yeah. new handle. I'd have to get, like, like at that point, nothing, I was simply, it was, it was at the point where I'm like, look, Gene, you're really beating a dead horse here. It had mm -hmm. its time, but I couldn't find the parts anymore. And when you started yeah. adding them all up, you, you buy a new bike. And you mentioned Diamondback. My cousin just got a new Diamondback. Nothing wrong with those bikes. They're really nice bikes. And um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you may even have a perks program through your medical, through work. Where I, <laughs> that's how I got this. My, my cousin got the bike for almost nothing through my old, my medical per I mean, anyway, yeah. like it didn't work out. But if I could have, I would have kept that bike with no problem. Yeah. That was a sweet bike. Yeah, I've tried to sell it over the years, and I just keep you know, coming back to like I'm just going to keep it. It's yeah. fun, mm -hmm. and I've had, like I said, I've had a number of other mm -hmm. great bikes, and every time you know, I I buy one, I'd ride it, I'd sell it, and I'd right. you know, I still have my KHS and my quiver, so I and, just go uh, back to that. Cross country is that your thing now, or now that you try no, some I, of the I other just, stuff, right? I mean, you got some pretty yeah, wicked I, stuff. I, yeah, I ride everything around here. I mean, it's not <laughs> so. There's a good downhill trail here called Thrillium, and okay. you know, you get abused if you take a hard tail on that. <laughs> but you know, it's it can handle anything. Doesn't mean it handles it well, but right. yeah, well, and you I know still what? ride. A lot around. of the new bikes that come out right now, to your point, um, they seem to say like like my remedy. Mm -hmm. um, they can handle, just like you said, they can handle anything, but maybe not as fast as yeah. a true downhill. Like you're going to have to, yeah. which is great for me because even if I had the state of the art bike, I'd be going the same speed, dude. I mean, I got to be realistic <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the name regular guy really wasn't a marketing <laughs> ploy here. <laughs> I mean, it's like, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And I still like to climb. So mm -hmm. this bike is great for climbing. Well, you single speed guys scare the crap out of me well, and my I'm, buddies. I mean, you I'm guys not, come out and we're like, oh, crap. I don't want to ride. He's got a single speed. Oh, no. No, I, 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 that, that's, that's tough for me. It's pretty hilly over here in, in New Jersey, and uh, that, that, that's tough. But, um, yeah, the bikes just keep on coming. New technology yeah. stuff. Now, uh, so what about coffee? What's your, what's your favorite 
brew and 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 let me ask you this and how yeah. you brew it because i've got the mr yeah. coffee drippity drip 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 type of yeah. thing and that just it, it sings the praise in the morning my wife and i call it the happy sound you hear it bubble <laughs> and a smile comes on our face you know but yeah but you've got yeah. a bunch of different things on here yeah so on our i mean you may have that in front of you so we yep. have a, a page on our website with all the different brew methods yep and so like for me personally at home i have all that stuff here and so literally <laughs> this is kind of how i do it mm-hmm Cause you know, I get up, you know, I was thinking about even this morning, like, like I just had these images of like, like before coffee, my life is like the walking dead. It looks like this post-apocalyptic scene. Everything is morbid <laughs> and horrible. And then I had this image of after coffee, I had this, this image of Pee Wee Herman riding his bike and everything is happy. I'm like, that's my life. And so yeah, when yeah. I get up in the morning, I'm like, I need coffee. And so like each of those brew methods, I mean, I don't do this intentionally or even strategically, but probably every month I'll just take one. Okay. Uh, maybe it's an AeroPress. This month I've been using the the GSI Ultralight Java Drip. And okay. I just, that's how I use it at home. And I, you know, I just kind of rotate through. Because for me, every brew method even kind of almost accentuate something about the coffee okay. like you just taste a little something different based upon how you brew it and so i'm always tweaking and experimenting um you know grind coarseness and everything water temperature wow. so so it's been fun it's kind of like little little mad scientists every every morning and i enjoy it a lot and it keeps things lively it's mm-hmm. like because again you're rotating different brew methods and you know one of the things i've tried to do is you know, promote brew methods. I mean, some are a little more, more expensive, mm-hmm. but I'm, but at the same time like this, I'm talking to mountain bikers who like, right. Oh, 5,600 on that bike. That's a steal. Right. You know? Right. So, you know, when I'm, but I also want to be, you know, cognizant to say, all right, coffee is about fun. It shouldn't be, you know, the most expensive thing. And so, you know, try to have even cheap brew methods like mm-hmm. that little GSI dripper that I use. I think that's like 10 bucks. Right. Um, or people ask me all the time, what kind of hand grinder can I get? I'm like, Hey, this is $15 on Amazon has a ceramic burr grinder. It mm-hmm. actually works great. Um, so, yeah, but yeah. that but that same mountain biker that's going to drop 56 <laughs> on the downhill bike or the bike is going to complain about a patch kit that costs more than five dollars i don't understand these people i did a whole other review on this on this great patch kit for tubeless bikes like fifty dollars i go dude you just spent three or four grand on a bike you're really complaining about 50 bucks for a patch kit that's anyway people are crazy so it's so it's it's money it's all in perspective you know yeah yeah but um yeah it's funny um you mentioned the way you so uh i'm not sure if you have kids or not but um, but I do two two daughters, and they know that um, mommy is the bear. Until she, and it's just it's just a running thing. It's not, you know, what, you know, you know. And and one time, um, my wife accidentally you know tripped on the cat. They're always sticking their feet. You know, and 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 and, and, and rightfully so. She's trying to do everything in the house, trying to get everything done. And she's like, ah, oh, the cat's name's Lucy. What are you doing, Lucy? Get out of the way! And my little my little my little, little, little little piper comes up and says, mommy. Do you have your coffee yet this morning? <laughs> it's like it's a part of our life now, man. We just, it, is. it is. We have to have it. But um, yeah. So, but for us, before kids, we had the grinder, we mm. had the steamer, we had the whole, mm. whole bean, and I used to have different containers with different flavors labeled. Yeah. And that is a big butt Folger coffee thing sitting on a shelf, and a Mister Coffee. We drop it in the six scoops. We pump it out, and we shove it in our travel mug. So we went from gourmet to look just injected in our veins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this conversation is over. I mean, you just, you just acknowledge the drink Folgers. I'm joking. <laughs> no, man. Well, you gotta help me out over here. Teach me the wrong, the the the, the sins of my way over here. I just, but for, but first, I'm gonna send my two daughters over to your house for a little. A while and then, then maybe you'll maybe you'll even out a little bit <laughs> oh man well this is this is now okay well let me just ask you one got a flavor do you care like I, i'm a hazelnut and french vanilla guy i, I I'll, I'll bounce between those i love those like it just it just okay. they make me happy you know it's good stuff uh-huh. how about you um well i drink my coffee just straight black Ooh. and the fun thing about coffee and I think this is what distinguishes it from like like a Folgers um, mm-hmm. is that 
like even you look at our coffees or, or any you know roaster, you, mm-hmm. they're going to list kind of like the the flavor profile or the flavor notes. Um, you know, it could be green apple, um, tobacco, okay. caramel, or whatever. And so, so when you say what is my favorite coffee, like right now, like um, this morning I had our Colombian, and like I okay. love our Colombian Mano Bonito. It's mm-hmm. just oh, it's I. Love it's my favorite coffee mm-hmm. to drink. Is and that a so, stronger brew? Is that is, is Colombian coffee yeah, a little st- stronger yeah. or what? Okay. No, I mean most of our coffees would be considered like a light roast. Okay. Okay. Um. So so yeah so so much of the flavor is already the flavor is already in the green bean. Mm-hmm. So as a roaster, your job is to roast it in such a way that you accentuate those flavors that are already in the bean, okay. you know, itself. And so that's why there's, you know, this huge emphasis on like single origin coffees. And okay. even when we have like, we have a, a bike park blend right now and we're getting ready to roll out a trail builders blend. And okay. so for us, it's then it's an issue of like, how do we combine, you know, which coffees to make a good blend kind of to accentuate the best of, you know, the different coffees that we're, you know, blending together. That's well, I guess, I guess what you're saying is there, there's a lot more to it, Gene, than French vanilla. You know, they're, they're, yeah. you, you know, yeah. uh, and, and also um, to your point earlier, that <coughs> same that same coffee brewed differently mm-hmm. would also make it taste. You know, there's there'll be subtle differences in, yeah, in the yeah. taste just by mm-hmm. by how I mean, you know, well, heck, you take take an espresso. Right. And mm-hmm. that, that there's there's different tastes yep. that you'll get just probably from the same the same coffee itself by by brewing it yep. differently. I never metal really figured filters out, versus paper filters. Yeah, I, I never figured out how to use a press though. I don't. I don't okay. know that. That I, I look at them. I'm like, I don't. I'm, I'm not getting this. So I'll have to mess around with those a little bit more. Um, yeah. but that seemed pretty cool. And 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 the more I read about them, they seem to offer a good a good taste. They seem to be very mm-hmm. popular using a press. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's have you have you? I'm sure you had. You've you've used yeah. them before, right? I mean, yeah. Do you yeah. taste the have, difference? Yeah. We have a press on our on our website as okay. well. So yeah, so again, every how you how you brew it again, it's mm-hmm. gonna change things just a, a little. So you like okay. you know whether it's a French press or drinking espresso mm-hmm. or my favorite, I just I I'm, I'm a pour over guy. Okay, and so again, every way that you brew the coffee, pour over versus drip. Um, wow. Yeah, so it really does bring something out about the coffee for sure. All right, man. Well, look, I I thank you. This was a great mm-hmm. time talking. Uh, anything you yeah. want to let anybody know or anything like that, or we're doing pretty decent. Or I'll, folks, ch- I'll let, have links to have them try your coffee. Okay. We'll have some confidence. Yeah. Um, maybe just kind of take a look at the comments. Any questions come their way, you can help them out and stuff like that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, definitely. It's been fun. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's fun just to talk and share and laugh. Cool. Well, folks, I'll get some of this uh, this uh, super special coffee over here, some loam coffee. I'll let you know how it goes. And uh uh, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. Sean, thank you so much. I appreciate mm-hmm. this time. And um, thanks for tuning in, folks. And I'll catch you later on. Bye-bye. All right. Take care.